I'm pleased to invite Rabbi Andrew Baker, personal representative of the OSCE, Chair in Office on Combating Antisemitism, and AGC, Director of International Jewish Affairs, to present our next uh, speakers, please. Well, this is a great honor for me to do this. Uh, many of us have traveled some distance to come here, but I think there are a few people that had quite the same journey to Israel as uh, did uh, Yuli Edelstein. Uh, I think people know his biography very well, uh, uh, what he endured uh, uh, in uh, the Soviet Union, in a Soviet labor camp, uh, a refusenik, ultimately to come to Israel and then, of course, uh, uh, once here, what has been a remarkable uh, career, uh, a founding member of Yisrael uh, Ba'aliyah Party, uh, member of uh, the Knesset, uh, uh, deputy speaker, uh, minister uh, for diaspora affairs in that role, as some people here will recall at the last global forum, really the, the partner in the organization of this event and now to have him with us this year as the speaker of the Knesset, I'm delighted to present to you our speaker, Yuli Edelstein. Good afternoon. I do have to say that I feel at home, though it's a strange feeling, you know, to be in a forum that is combating anti-Semitism and to say that I feel at home is kind of a peculiar start. But uh, it's wonderful to see all the familiar faces and the new faces and to learn about a very good turnout to this conference. And once again, I'm not sure this is a reason to be very joyful. I wish we wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have a case, we wouldn't have a reason together here, but uh, that's exactly my feeling. I'll tell you quite frankly that uh, if you would ask me to define in one word my feeling about uh, this gathering and about the subject that uh, we are discussing here and about the reports that I till recently was getting in my capacity as Minister of uh, Public Diplomacy and Diaspora Affairs, in one word I would say surreal. How did it come to this, ladies and gentlemen, that after all that happened during the Second World War, after the Nazi crimes were exposed for all to see, after the triumph of Zionism demolished all pre prejudices against the Jews, after the collapse of the Soviet system with its inbred state anti-Semitism, yet here we are in Jerusalem coming together again to debate ways and means to combat the resurgent wave of anti-Semitism. I would like to begin with just two news items, just examples, that arrived recently from Europe. A Hungarian kickboxer was banned from competition in Prague because of his tattoos that featured a portrait of Hitler, a swastika, and the slogan, Death to the Jews. This, in fact, is the less alarming piece of news from Hungary, where on May 4th, hundreds of supporters of the third largest party in the local parliament gathered to protest the Israeli conquest of the country and the subversion of the government by world Zionism. The other news just arrived from Spain. There, in the autonomous region of Galicia, the third largest political bloc, the left alternative, demands from the local government to cancel a concert by the Israeli singer Achinoam Nini because, and I quote, she has sympathy to the Zionist military and her concert will, and I quote again, contribute to the colonization of Palestine. In case you wonder, a few months ago the same left alternative vetoed a parliamentary, a parliamentary resolution condemning the Holocaust. Probably, I guess, it will also somehow contribute to the colonization of Palestine. In those small stories, like in a drop of water, we can see the reflection of the ugly face of the modern anti-Semitism. 
For a long time, we were used to fight the old forms of the eternal hatred of the Jewish people. After the horrors of the Holocaust became public knowledge, the basic revulsion of all the decent men and women in the West, regardless of their political and religious worldview, made the job of combating traditional expressions of anti-Jewish prejudice fairly simple and straightforward. Pretty soon, the segregated clubs, the corporations, student societies, and colleges, which excluded Jews, became extinct. With them went the abusive journalists and the firebrand priests, the Jew-baiting comedians, and the populist politicians, who in the past thought nothing of spiking the propaganda brew with some thinly veiled anti-Jewish propaganda. While fighting against the incorrigible neo-Nazi remnant, in the midst of our age, we saw them for what they really were, stupid, pathetic, doomed. Yet the virus didn't die. It mutated. It took on board false progressive slogans. It, in, it, invol, it evolved a new language. It thrived on any, so, an, on any sort of misery, economic troubles, cultural shocks, migration conflicts, it exploded all over the old killing grounds of Europe, from Ukraine through Hungary to Greece. And in its quest for Jewish blood, it found surprising new allies. The anti-Semitic right and the anti-Zionist left are ideological twins. Notice how painfully alike they sound, those Hungarians of the extreme right and those Galicians of the extreme left. They all decry Zionists and they mean Jews. Let us start by not allowing this charade to go any further. If you banish Achinoam Nini for Zionist sympathies and veto Holocaust recognition, you can't seriously claim that you are against some Israeli policies that offend your gentle Galician soul. You are against the Jews, period. It's anti-Semitism. It's not rocket science. We get it. Another source of inspiration for the new anti-Semitism comes from the Middle East. The language, the imagery, the worldview, which for the last hundred years were the staple of the diet of misinformation in the Arab world, are increasingly exported to the West and infect the minds of those who like to think of themselves as immune to racist propaganda. The greatest of success came when the influential yet feeble intellectual lights adopted the narrative which substitutes Palestinians for Jews, Jews for Nazis, and blames Israel for perpetuating a new Holocaust. The twin argument that the Holocaust itself is a lie, and if it isn't, then Zionists were somehow complicit in it, was so far lost in translation, but I guess it's just a matter of time. The technological progress has given the new breed of Jew haters new and powerful tools to spread their poison. Those who believe in the authenticity of the protocols of the elders of Zion won't be invited to the television studios or get access to the opinion pages of any respectable newspaper. No matter, now they have the internet. As the report of our task force on hate on the internet indicates, and here's probably a good time to say thank you to my co-chair Chris Wolf and ADL and all the others who were involved in uh, making that report possible. The virtual space is swamped with anti-Semitism of the worst kind, which is sheltering mostly under the protection, I know it sounds terrible, but it's under the protection of the American Constitution and the First Amendment. After the war, the victorious allies hanged the anti-Semitic inciter Julius Streicher. Today, the modern Streichers are shielded by the sanctity of freedom, of freedom of speech, and the difficulty of cross-border legal action. Let me be clear, whatever the effect of this new anti-Semitism on the Jewish state, its most immediate and probable victims don't live in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv. They live in Boston and Toulouse, in London and Berlin. The legitimization of anti-Semitism affects, first and foremost, the young Muslim immigrants to the West, some of whom 
interpret it as permission to vent their anger and frustration on the first available Jew. And they find him or her nearby, not in Israel. What can we do as lawmakers to stand up to this threat? First of all, we should strive for special provisions against anti-Semitism to be inserted into existing anti-racism legislations. On paper, those should be sufficient to be used as tools to combat the oldest hate of them all. In practice, the clever masquerade of anti-Semites into critics of Israel often works, rendering the laws mute. Even in the United States, the authorities refused for years to apply anti-Ration's Title VI of the Civil Rights Act to the harassment of the Jewish students on campus. Only recently, this policy has been changed. Too often, those who claim that the general that the general definitions of anti-racism have got anti-Semitism covered cover only their determination to do nothing. My friends, anti-Semitism is real, and the laws against it must be real as well. Our second task is to defend the main achievement of the past struggle, to keep anti-Semitism unacceptable in civilized societies, to be ready to isolate and condemn those who are infected with it, even if they call themselves democratic parliamentarians, just as some of us do. The resurgent nation nationalism in Eastern Europe, the economic crisis in the West, have deposited in the national assemblies of Greece, Hungary, Ukraine, and some other countries, people whose views on Jews are incompatible with basic principles of humanity. We must raise the awareness among our colleagues and encourage them to abandon politics as usual and to draw a clear red line before encroaching normalization of anti-Semitic discourse in the parliaments of Europe. Finally, we must turn our attention to the internet. Here, the consensus of all experts rejects any attempt to legis legislate intolerance to anti-Semitism. Nevertheless, as the task force's report shows, there is a lot to be done working with companies and entities that comprise the World Wide Web and the social networks to impress upon them the urgency to impress upon them the urgency of independent and collective action against the incitement and hate speech. Solutions exist. They just need to be popularized and implemented. Last but not least, combating anti-Semitism today is not only doing justice to Israel. It is protecting the only democracy in the Middle East. And I urge you to remember always that we are fighting not only for the Jewish people, not only for the, for the state of Israel, and not even for the Jews living in each and every one of the countries that you represent here. We are fighting for democracy and all of humankind. Thank you.